Okay, if you attach the fabric interconnect to the upstream LAN in end host mode with your individual uplinks, let's take a look at an example of how traffic flows and some link failure scenarios. So I've got my fabric interconnect A here, 6100A, and I've got three uh, individual uplinks. What I mean by that is I haven't, th these are three physical interfaces and they're also three discrete logical interfaces, meaning I haven't bundled any of these links together in a port channel in any way. So the Fabric Interconnect really sees three available links for pinning. So we've got uh, an ESX host here running a vSwitch or 1000V with a couple of VMs on it and there's also another server here, server 2, with a VNIC0 pinned. So you can see there's pinning happening here. This would be all dynamic pinning. Server 2 is pinned to the red uplink and the ESX host is pinned to the orange uplink. So I've got a couple of VMs on the ESX host. We're using the vSwitch or 1000V and these VMs are going to be steered out of VNIC0 for their upstream traffic. So because VNIC0 is pinned to the orange uplink, we have all of the traffic from VNIC0 using the same physical uplink. So both VM1 and VM2 are using the orange uplink. Now what were to happen if that orange uplink was to fail? So now that path is no longer available. So what will happen, remember we discussed in the previous slide, was dynamic repinning. So what's going to happen is the server's going, the Fabric Interconnect is going to pick a new uplink for VNIC0, and this happens sub-second. Meanwhile, the VNIC for the server stays up. There's no disruption at all shown to the ESX host. A new uplink is picked, in this case the orange, or I'm sorry, the yellow uplink, and at the same time that happens, the software of the Fabric Interconnect, the UCS manager, has to get involved and send a gratuitous ARP message out the, or, or out the yellow uplink, alerting the upstream network, hey, MAC addresses A, B, and C are now on the yellow uplink. And when that happens, we can now transmit traffic um, out of the yellow uplink because VNIC0 is now pinned to a new uplink, and the upstream network has been alerted that all of these MAC addresses are now on this new uplink, thanks to the uh, gratuitous ARP sent by the Fabric Interconnect. So there was a software-driven process here after a link failure. When that orange uplink failed, the Fabric Interconnect had to do dynamic repinning and it had to send that gratuitous ARP message to provide that transparent failover uh, to the upstream network and to the ESX, ESX host um, that was using the failed uplink. All right, let's take a look at the same scenario, but now this time let's use port channel uplinks as opposed to individual uplinks. So what I did is I went into UCS Manager and I picked uh, two physical links and I made them into a port channel and that combined them together into one logical uplink. So now I've got this orange uplink composed of two physical member links and the Fabric Interconnect views that really as one logical uplink. So all the VNICs here, at least server VNIC 0 on the ESX host is going to be pinned to this logical orange uplink and has access to all of the bandwidth um, in that logical uplink. So as traffic flows out of VNIC 0 for these VMs, the Fabric Interconnect is going to make a hardware-driven port channel load balancing decision. This is an IP hashing that's done. It's very typical of a layer 2 switch with, with port channels. So some flows are going to end up on one member link and some flows will end up on a, another member link. So we've got more overall bandwidth per uplink and I've got uh, better load balancing happening here. Now what if one of those member link fails, just like we saw in the previous slide? Well, the uh, logical uplink remains intact even though I had a physical link failure. So there is no repinning event. The Fabric Interconnect does not have to get involved, the software does not have to get involved to make a repinning decision because the uplink did not fail. The logical uplink did not fail. Now the flows that we're using that failed member link, those will be moved over to the remaining member link and that again is a hardware based uh, failure event and it happens sub-second. Furthermore, um, really only half the flows were affected this time because we had the load balancing. The red VM, VM2, was never affected. 
And when VM number one was moved over to the new member link, we did not have to send a gratuitous ARP for that. The Fabric Interconnect software did not have to get involved and send a gratuitous ARP to the upstream network because the logical uplink remained intact. Uh, there, there really was no change in the location of VM1 from the upstream uh, network's perspective, so we didn't have to get involved in setting gratuitous ARPs. So when you have failure events with port channels, there's just overall fewer moving parts to um, complete the failure, and fewer things need to get involved from a software perspective. So you're going to have you know, better load balancing and better overall handling of failure events. So definitely if you can use port channels where you can, it's definitely recommended and we'll take a look at expanding that out to the upstream network in subsequent slides. Okay, here's the same scenario again where I've got the port channel uplinks. I've got my orange logical uplink and I've got my red logical uplink and they're going to their separate upstream switches. And remember I pointed out before that if I had a physical link failure within a port channel that that was very much a hardware driven process. And so you had fed, you know, better convergence, faster convergence, more resiliency, better load balancing for physical link failures. Now a port channel um, is going to land on a physical switch upstream, obviously. And if I didn't have any special clustering or, or um, multi-chassis ether channel technology on my upstream LAN, like we're showing here, this is just a basic LAN setup, now I've got uh, a potential for upstream LAN switch failures. So again, I'm going to have uh, my ESX host with VNIC0 pinned to the orange uplink, sending flows up the orange uplink, load balanced, as we're seeing here. And all of those flows, because they're landing on this one physical switch, are arriving at that physical switch. Now, what were to happen if that physical switch were to fail, power failure or, or such? Well, now we do have a failed logical uplink. Both of the uh, member links in that port channel have failed because the upstream switch has failed. Now the Fabric Interconnect does need to get involved in making a repinning decision because that logical link is down. So what happens is uh, the VNX stays up for the ESX host. There's no effect shown there. And a repinning decision is made to the red logical uplink. But now the location has changed for these flows for VM1 and VM2. So we do need to send a gratuitous ARP up the red uplink now for all of the MAC addresses that were affected. And then traffic can resume on the new pinned uplink, the red logical uplink. So as we saw before, if you had physical link failures with port channel uplinks, you had the hardware driven failure process and uh, fewer um, CPU cycles used on the Fabric Interconnect to drive that failure uh, recovery. But if you have a physical upstream switch failure and a, an entire logical link goes down, well then we still have that software driven process of repinning and sending the gratuitous ARPs. So that's something to keep in mind. If you had hundreds of servers or even maybe thousands of VMs that were each um, connected to the Fabric Interconnect through VMFX, for example, and you had a logical uplink like this fail, you could have potentially um, you know, hundreds of links that need to be repinned and hundreds of, of MAC addresses that need to be um, processed with gratuitous ARPs. So that could affect the time in which it takes for uh, those failures to, re to fully recover. So that's something that you might want to keep an eye on or test out in your lab. But as we'll see in the next slide, there's a way that we can even influence this better by creating logical uh, uplinks across the entire system and across uh, the both LAN switches. So now let's take the port channel uplink concept and extend it to the upstream LAN through a uh, multi-chassis ether channel capability. In this case we will show VPC. These could be a pair of Nexus 7000s uh, configured in a VPC domain. And so with that what I'm able to do now is I'm able to take all of the uplinks out of this Fabric Interconnect and put it into one logical port channel that is spread across two physical upstream switches. So the Fabric Interconnect really just sees, again, just one logical uplink. So all of the pinning is just done to one uplink. So I've got my ESX host again with its VNIC0 and all the other servers will all be pinned to the same one logical uplink. And as flows are egressing out of the system again, I've got my VMs on these ESX hosts. 
the Fabric Interconnect is going to make a simple port channel hashing decision and now it's got four member links to use as opposed to two. So it could pick any one of those four links going to any one of the upstream switches. This again is a hardware driven load balancing decision so I could have um, a lot of flow diversity across all of these links. Now remember we looked at before how we had, if a, with port channel uplinks, if we had a physical link failure, that was very much a hardware driven process and no um, Fabric Interconnect software had to get involved with that. But if we had an upstream physical switch failure without clustering in the upstream land, then we did have a lot of software involvement from the Fabric Interconnect in repinning and gratuitous ARPs. But now if we take the port channel and we extend that across multiple chassis upstream with VPC technology, then let's take a look at what happens now if we have a physical upstream switch failure. So in this case, I lost that same physical switch again, but the red logical uplink remains intact. From the perspective of the Fabric Interconnect, it has this one port channel link and two of its member links are down, and so it has two remaining. So all the flows that were on the affected link will just be repositioned uh, onto a new member link and this again is a typical hardware based uh, decision made by the uh, hardware chips on the Fabric Interconnect just like any layer 2 switch would do. The, the UCS manager did not have to get involved in making any repinning decisions at all even though I had an entire upstream switch failure. Furthermore, no gratuitous ARPs had to be transmitted uh, throughout the network at all because we still have this one logical uplink that is intact. And even though I had a flow move from one physical switch to another, in this case VM2 was on the failed switch, now it's on the remaining switch, the actual location of VM2 from the perspective of the network hasn't changed at all. It's still on this red port channel. So it was not necessary at all to send a gratuitous ARP. So that's a lot of CPU processing on the Fabric Interconnect that was totally is not needed and we've saved ourselves a lot of, of um, software involvement in failure recovery. So we've got hardware driven failure here for link failures in addition to hardware driven failures for switch failures. So if I had hundreds of servers or thousands of VMs all attached to the Fabric Interconnect with VNIX, maybe through VMFX, and if I had a link failure or if I even had an upstream switch failure, there's very fast hardware driven uh, reaction and, and failure recovery that will really speed up the entire process. So if you have uh, port channel uplinks, that's a good thing and it's even a better thing if you can combine that with an upstream LAN switch clustering technology like uh, VPC for example. So again you have overall fewer moving parts, fewer gratuitous ARPs, better overall load balancing and, and link resiliency. So VPC or upstream multi-chassis ether channel in general is definitely recommended for your uplinks out of UCS.